video will be um, a tutorial on generating surfaces within Arc Pro, uh, in particular how you generate LiDAR surfaces because uh, the, the toolbar is um, um, you know, mechanically and graphically different enough from uh, desktop, even if sort of the actual, um, you know, the context and the, and the techniques behind it are the same. So I just want to give it an intro here. So, you know, for those who are coming, um, you know, with, with less background, remember that uh, one of the great uses of raster is to generate um, you know, uh, a surface that's, you know, depicting in, in the second dimension something that's actually 3D, right? So we can classify every grid cell of the world based on its height above sea level. And, you know, even more so then we could be adding extra heights on that, like the height of a building or the height of, uh, you know, a tree. So we could do anything from like a DSM, which is a digital surface model, just the elevation of the ground to a DTM, which is a digital terrain model, which actually would be best akin if you were to take like a sheet, like a blanket, and, you know, drop it over the world, you know, drop it over the city you're in. So if we dropped it over Philadelphia, that blanket would kind of fall into certain crevices, and it would show the outline, right, of the city uh, as a whole, its, its buildings, its trees, you know, and its ground. And one of the best ways to be able to do that, um, if not the best way, obviously, in, in in ARC is through LiDAR. And LiDAR is uh, usually connected, collected through a drone or a plane, um, you know, or a LiDAR gun, which just shoots billions upon billions of points uh, at the world uh, and then records what bounces back, you know, the type of surface, how far away it was. You know, when it was first described to me, to use another metaphor, imagine uh, you know, you're in like a, a horror movie and a horde of flies or a horde of locusts or a horde of bees come down and cover your whole body. Well, you would still see your shape, right, in your outline, where your arm is and where that is. You would simply be covered <coughs> kind of almost head to toe by these points, these bees. And so that's what we're going to <coughs> try to emulate here. So the way you, you work with LiDAR, LiDAR comes uh, typically in this data that's called an, uh, an LAS. Right, so you'll see in Pro in your catalog a symbol of a plane shooting those little points down. And you can look at those individually. Uh, the data is so um, large and the points are so voluminous that they, they usually come um, you know, as a series of packages. And so you need to kind of put them all together. So notice I have them organized in a folder called LiDAR 2015. So what I'll do is in whatever folder that's holding things, you know, I'll come here and I'll do right click and do new LAS data set. Right? So that part is similar to how you would do it on um, in desktop. I call it my LiDAR. So right now it's uh, simply going to, or once it loads, if it loads, here we go, my LiDAR. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to the properties. And this is sort of how you populate it. Right, right now it's just a holding container. And I don't need to get into any of this yet, but I'll just come down to LAS files. These are all sort of the individual LiDAR documents that I'm going to load in here. And you have two ways of doing it. You could add a file, right, so I could literally drop each LAS data set individually into this. Or I could do what's called add folders. And that's what I want to do here because this will allow me to navigate just to that um, LiDAR 2017 folder that I showed a moment ago. So November 2nd, November 2nd class, Philadelphia, LiDAR 2017. I'll just pause on that folder, okay? And they've all loaded. And, you know, it's giving me a sense, like, this is how many points that I'm looking at here. This is how far apart they all are. This is the Z, which is the, the elevation height or the, the building or, or whatever height, the low point and, and sort of the high point. And hit OK. And then what I can do is I now have the ability to drag it into my map. Now you may be zoomed out at first. I don't know where you're going to be zoomed or how your thing's going to be orchestrated. All right, so I'm zoomed out and it's at first going to show me sort of these. And I've got this LAS data set layer here so I can come to appearance. 
And as I start to zoom in, points are going to start showing themselves. And interestingly enough, only 2.4% of all points, right? So it's showing you sort of a sample so you can get a sense of like what the lower elevation and what the higher elevation points actually are. You can change that around all you want here, right? You could, um, you know, a display limit and show you the, the maximum number of points to display. A resolution would show you kind of when the thinning will occur. And then this shows you sort of how the points start to be thinned. <laughs> You know, but either way, the purpose is you're starting to see the bees, right? The effect of these bees taking over building shapes, right? That's what's very cool. If I turn on my building layer, I can sort of see. That's why this area is so much higher than the place around it, because it is covering sort of all these, uh, these points. Um, and because of that, you can actually start to play around with your LiDAR a little bit more. Every single point is coded. Uh, you know, in a way, and I can't remember if I see it here. Let's just take a check. If I go to, like, properties, theoretically, you should be able to see, right, my point sort of telling me, um, you know, I'm ground, I'm noise, I'm overlap, um, you know, and there's more classifications, too. I'm only showing kind of a couple, but there's also those that, you know, would say building or would say tree. Like, it's kind of coded to be not only what the height of something is, um, but also sort of what it's, it's codifying. And you can filter that out too, right? Right now we're showing what's called terrain. That means anything that we codified is being included in this map. But if I were to go to ground, notice the buildings are going to disappear, right? The outline of the building sort of carves away here. Because what I'm now looking at is just the ground, right? The space in between, no trees, no buildings, no anything. So I might actually use that if I wanted to create, um, you know, like a map of just the surface to run like a slope on or something. And therefore, I can also go to the non-ground, right? I can simply show anything that isn't the ground. Now, a lot of you are going to look at that and be like, well, that looks like the ground, but it's not. I mean, this is trees, right? Or this might be a trash can, or that's clearly like a building. Um, you know, you can see there's some areas that are blank where it's simply open and they wouldn't be finding anything, or like the middle of the street is usually a good example um, of that as well. Um, you know, so I'm going to put it back to the all, just so we're looking at a terrain. Uh, surface constraints will likely have a different video to get into some more advanced LiDAR, but that's if you want to kind of put some elements in here like a fault, um, you know, or like a, like, a, like a fill or like an underwater kind of reservoir or well that might be messing with your overall... Um, topography. Uh, on the data side, um, we are going to learn different ways, or we're going to come back to this on some surface videos. There's actually some cool sort of uh, areas here, you know, if I can engage a, a, a trick really quick, you know, that might tell me like the volume, if I were to draw a polygon of kind of the, um, you know, of, of what the volume is, right? So if I were to draw like a building shape here around that, or if I were maybe to use um, you know, this building, it would look at kind of how high um, and how long and how big the building is, and we'd be able to figure out sort of what its volume um, is, right? I can, I can calculate um, statistics about sort of the distribution of the points. I could use this to find issues and anything that needs to be kind of filled. And I can also then, like, look at the aspect, the direction of the slope. I could draw contour lines. I could draw the slope, and it could come out in something. And we're going to get into this eventually. Um, you know, we're going to show multiple sort of ways uh, to run these tips and techniques in later videos. But right now, I just want to introduce you to sort of what's here. But the most important thing here is this export. Because this is where I could actually take my LiDAR, and by going to raster, I'd be turning this into an actual grid, right? So I'll come here and I'll give you a name. Um, you know, we'll call you um, terrain, right? Because I have everything turned on. The value field is elevation. Um, you know, you can look at the, oops, you know, hold yourself kind of next to here and they should tell you with the interpolation type kind of what you're doing. But these are just sort of methods um, for figuring out what is, um, uh, like how to fill the gaps in between, how to ultimately digitize what elevation they're going to use for every grid cell. Um, you know, triangulation takes more like it looks at every three points and fills in the space in between. 
um, you know, a binning area essentially weights a, a variety of points in some way and then kind of gives a value to the cell. Uh, you can figure out what works best. I tend to use binning and then what's called IDW. I like that as a, a mechanism. That would mean that for every cell, it looks at all the points that would be in its area or around it and runs an interpolation such that it calculates its value based on the, um, the average of those points factored out by how far those points are. So the points that are right in the middle of the cell will have the greatest influence. Ones that are on like the outside of the cell will have less, and then ones that maybe are touching the cell but aren't in it will have some influence but lower. Uh, usually I like it to be a floating point. This is where we're essentially just telling it how big. If your cell size 10, it will come back with 10 by 10. You can kind of control that as you will. Run it, and as long as you saved everything kind of in the right way, um, what you'll come back with in a moment when it loads is a raster that's going to show you the elevation um, for each point um, and, and what the land is. And there, whoops, so I might have a processing extent set. So I'm glad this happened. So if this ever happens to you and it comes back looking like this, it looks like it succeeded, but it didn't. What this means is it couldn't calculate itself. And it's likely because we set a processing extent for like a, a, a map once. So if this ever happens, come up to analysis, go to environments, and boom, right? We must have been working in Lancaster. We were working in some other place. And so we still have that processing extent set, right? I'm in Philly now. So effectively what's happening is it's trying to do a raster analysis of data in Philly using a window in Lancaster. So of course nothing will ever come back because it's not in Lancaster. So I just need to reset this to default, you know, or make it something Philadelphia specific. And that should be all I need. I don't really want there to be any sort of cell size issue. I just want the cells to be, you know, whatever I make them. No mask. Mask should be gone. There we go. No mask. Max of inputs default. So now if I try to run the, um, the same thing again, come back to LiDAR, go to data, export to a raster. Uh, you know, give it away here, terrain 2. Uh, elevation, bidding, IDW, cell size 10. Now there shouldn't be an issue. So again, I'm glad that happened because uh, the, the way the environments work is a little bit different here. It would be the same problem in desktop. I just want to make sure if that ever occurs to you, you get that thing that doesn't look right or it doesn't actually produce a real grid that you can see. Likely that's a big issue. Um, and there we go, right? We've, we've kind of created a nice area here where I can see the elevation change. And, and I've, I look kind of based on the, um, uh, you know, the ground all the way up to the, to the building heights because I'm looking at all of my points. And, you know, the cool thing about LiDAR, right, is it can create different type of surfaces depending on that appearance thing you set, right? If I were to, instead of all points, do just ground... And then I want to run the same thing. And I'll run my raster again. And I'll call this one just ground. Oops. Uh, elevation, binning, we'll set an IDW, cell size 10, run it. And give it its moment and it'll come back to us. And there you go, right? You can see they're different, right? This one isn't showing, and if it is showing the buildings, it's because it's showing their bases, right? Their values are a little bit smaller than they would be if I turn on my terrain one underneath, where you can really see sort of the building shapes. And the reason you can see them is because we're showing kind of the peaks of the buildings. So terrain often used if you want to drape something over the surface, visibility, hill shade, ground you would typically use if you want to just calculate slope or some other uh, measure. So that's the basics for your LiDAR here. Not very different, just a slightly different toolbar as you've seen up here. And then in future videos we'll actually sort of dive into some um, you know, tips and techniques uh, around some advanced surface analysis using LiDAR or some other, um, other tools.